All right. So for Jazz, Los Angeles County tax collector, cities, county schools, and all other taxing agencies in Los Angeles County secure property tax for current and past fiscal year. Notice of delinquency. Okay, Charlie's Vinyl, 1222 East Florence Ave, Inglewood, Inglewood, whoa, California, 90300. Uh, Andrew Rodriguez is the treasurer and tax collector. <laughs> hey, look at the address, 156 Anywhere Street, first floor lobby. Damn, he ain't even got an office. This motherfucker just on the first floor or on the web. Holla at your boy. Uh, property location and or property description, 1227 East Florence. Delinquent tax information. Uh, the tax amount, penalties, and costs of the property are past due. If full payment, blah, 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 on the U.S. Postal Services, postmark June 30th. Uh, on July 1st, uh, something, it will probably be like a, a penalty. Look like $45, $45 penalty. And at the rate of 3% per month will be imposed on the outstanding tax. Residential lots and commercial property may be sold at public auction status for three years. Residential and agricultural property in tax defaulted status for five years. Uh, Damn, they don't show the taxes. Hold on, let me let me let me run it a little bit. I'm trying to see how much taxes is and see if he actually hustled willing them. I wanted this little Ashley see it. Because during this scene, we know that Hillary pulls up. Hillary and Ashley pull up. That's my birthday, June thirtieth. Renee, you need to send. You need to send. Uh, <laughs> you need to send Jazz a thousand dollars then, because that's how much he owes. Ot said anywhere street don't give him shit. That's a scam notice. A hey, facts. That thing said like one five six anywhere street. Anywhere street, nigga. I've never heard of anywhere street. I don't even think there's an anywhere street in America. Kenna said they're trying to gentrify that neighborhood. Poor Jazz. No, they just trying to collect the taxes. If Jazz paid his taxes, then it is what it is. You know, me, personally, every now and then, I just go on. I go looking like different. In Missouri, you can just go to the county website, and you can look at everyone with delinquent taxes. There's a couple of people on the same block that I grew up on. I'm just waiting on them to not pay them. I'm just waiting on the end of the year, because if I can get your taxes, where I only got to pay like ten, fifteen thousand dollars for the delinquent taxes, and I can get your property. Oh, that's a win-win for me. Call me win-win because all I do is win. Listen, if financially financially responsible, if you know that you have a business or something, that's a all right, all right, all right. That's the thing. So when you win the lottery. A lot of people go broke when they win the lottery. And the reason for that is, is because once you win the lottery, let's just use even numbers. Say you make $100 million. You win $100 million after taxes. You got $100 million. Well, every year you're going to get taxed on that. Every year you're going to get taxed on that. So if you don't have any money coming in, that money is just continuously getting taxed. Boom, 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 boom. You got this just sitting there. Boom, 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 boom. First of all, none of it's covered by FDIC, what they moved up to 300,000. So you got to put that to multiple banks. But then you got family members that say, hey, can you buy me a house? Okay, how much is the house? The house is $300,000. Boom, the house is paid for. So when you hear people say, oh, my house is paid for, owning stuff is the best thing ever. Well, the only thing is, depending on most, most states got property tax. Now you got a $300,000 house. You got utilities, you got goddamn HOA that you got to pay monthly. And then at the end of the year, you got property tax. Now, the only problem is I paid off your $300,000 house, but your taxes are going to be 
three thousand dollars at the end of the year. So because you have a house that's paid for, you forgot all about the taxes. Now, at the end of the year, you talking about, Mo, can you lend me four thousand dollars because there's taxes on the houses? And I'm like, I told you there was taxes on the houses when I bought the house for you. So even though the house is paid off, you still don't own that house because if you don't pay the taxes on it, the state is going to own that. And that's why a lot of people lose their houses, especially when they're buying family member shit, because they forget to. All right. I need to put in a budget for myself because I got to pay these taxes. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't pay the taxes, Charlie's Vinyl, they about to be delinquent $30,000. And guess what? A young nigga like me, I got 30 that I can dispose of to give me some property. Boom. I just got to pay the taxes. Taxes probably be most, maybe 5000 a year. But I got prime real estate. So I'm hoping that Jazz lose it. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping he lose Charlie's vinyl. So I can grab Charlie's vinyl, gut that mother sucker out, and then when they kind of come and try to gentrify it, boom, all I paid was the little $30,000 for the taxes. Now they about to come in here and for this real estate, this land, this property, Oh, yeah, I'll take a smooth $250,000. Go ahead and write that up. Matter of fact, wire that to my account. Boom, $250,000 off a $30,000 investment. Easy money. See, people talk about gentrification. Yeah, it's, it's definitely bad, especially for lower income people. But listen, if you put yourself in a, a position to be able to pause on putting yourself there. <laughs> but if you put yourself in a situation where you can succeed, hey, a nigga being delinquent on his taxes is a win. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. You can't afford your taxes. You shouldn't have been up in there. You shouldn't be riding around in a $30,000 low rider when you can't afford the goddamn taxes on this building. To me, that's financially irresponsible. So that's why I pocket watch. And now I know that jazz ain't good with money. So now I know I just got to keep watching jazz because at the end of the day, Jazz is going to fuck up. It might not be this year. It might not be next year. Three years, he's going to fuck up. Charlie's Vinyl is going to become Moe's real estate. <laughs> real estate. Real estate. So me, I hope Jazz keeps it. I hope Jazz pays that $30,000 down in taxes. Because in two years, those taxes only gonna be about ten thousand that they gotta that he gotta pay that he can't afford. And guess what? I just cut back my expenses twenty thousand dollars, and now we feast. True story. So I know we talking about jazz, but we also talking about his delinquent taxes. So my first property that I got, I got my first property, two bedroom. Full basement. I got it for $15,000. $15,000 cash paid to the state of Kansas. Did my thing. I'm not going to tell you all the county that I got, Lynn, because then you can start looking me up and you start figuring shit out. But my first piece of investment property that I got on my own, $15,000 cash. Boom. Taxes behind. Auction coming up. I said, what? So my mom's friend first took me on my first auction. This is the first time I'm realizing I'm probably like, probably like 19 years old. I'm realizing you go in there, these houses, they ran down, but shit. You go in there, you might be able to get something for like $5,000, $6,000. You just got to have that cash on hand. Boom. I went out there. She showed me a property and I like, you know what? I'm going to take a risk. So I got my first investment property at 20. This is a year after she showed me this. Went out there, seen it. I'm like, damn, this is actually straight. Little 15 piece. Boom, boom, boom. Cash. It took me like three, four years before I actually started doing anything with it. But you just slowly put some money up, put some money up. First thing I did, got all the carpet about it. Then we worked on the kitchen because the kitchen and the bathrooms is where you get your money at. It's where you get your money at. So I got the, the carpet about it. There was a little bit of rug. I mean, not rug. There's a little it was wood up on there. It wasn't that good, but it was good enough, especially for the city that it was in. Like It is what it is. Got the kitchen out. You get you some cabinets, Home Depot, bring them out there. Boom, boom, boom. Set them up. Got the mom, you know what I'm saying? My Mexican partners, they did the counters and everything for me. Did the did the cabinets. Boom. That right there was like a little 
three thousand, four thousand out of my pocket. I let the house sit for like six months, and then what I do? I attack the bathrooms. I attack the bathrooms. That came up to like five thousand, and this is back in two thousand twenty twenty five. Yeah, I was twenty. I was twenty and twenty five. Yeah, boom. So that was ten thousand dollars over about. Uh, about 10 months for thousand dollars a month let it sit for a little bit next thing i had them do come in do the walls then the next thing i had them go go down in the basement put the uh, i had to have them do the walls had a they had a goddamn scrape the walls off they put the what i had them put on first was the the paint that you put in the swimming pool because the wall was leaking but the foundation was good so we just had to get the uh the wall had a guy come and patch it up fill up the walls then i had them put the paint that you put in the swimming pools in there shit that whole thing right there was thirty five hundred dollars boom let the house sit for like six months shit paid for let it sit for another six months then what i do came back came back with the five thousand people bing 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 had them do all the paint had them start the landscape on the outside so right now i'm in about fifteen thousand dollars on top of the 15 that i already paid now the house is paid for the house is making money back i didn't recoup all of that and it's just sitting there and it's just easy money coming in so what you look for is the delinquent taxes one man's trash is another man's treasure and i figured that out at 20 years old that took me about two years before i actually got that house up and running where i could actually make some money for it and i made the money back within three years but shit, it's it's a learning experience. You got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got. Now, if I lost my property, no one will be on here talking about, Mo, that's so sad. Y'all be like, damn, nigga, you should have paid them taxes. Should have paid them taxes. Shouldn't have been pocket watching. But anyway, that's what's going on. Nah, AGTV, Mo, nah, hell no. Nah, I don't. Now, my mom's house. Before she got the landscaper to come through, I did do her garden in the front door. I get out there. I always try to do stuff by myself because I had to cut back expenses. Always try to do it yourself. But anyway, Jazz, we know he's in a bind right now. He's about to lose his property. We didn't win all off into the deep end. But fuck all that. Let's get back on course. So Jazz and Hillary, we know that Jazz is broke. He's losing Charlie's vinyl. But, excuse me. <clears throat> he comes in and Hillary's been peeping him out. Hillary's been, she's been watching. I've been watching you like a hawk in the sky. And I, and you are my prey. Well, she played jazz off. And we're going to have to get another drink because I'm losing my voice. So I'm definitely going to have to get some more drink to, to rehydrate. But. This whole time, Jazz, him and him and Hillary's relationship, when I look at it, it's not your typical relationship. Hillary's supposed to be with a balling ass dude. Hillary ain't supposed to be with some guy that lives in Inglewood, that has a record store, that's going out of business, that's losing money daily. Hillary grew up in a family where she's supposed to be, how would you say it, more advanced. She should have a head start. But for some reason, she's feeling Jazz, and that's because Jazz is a genuine guy. Now, we were just talking trash about him being behind on his taxes, but that's just how hood niggas are. When you inherit stuff, you don't actually... He's only like 20-something years old, so he really doesn't comprehend what it takes to actually run a business. He's just out here living, thinking since my uncle got the store paid off, it's good to go. But in reality, it's not like that. Now, when this scene right here happened, this is when he calls Hillary a coward. This is when he came into the to the house. He had the girl in the red fly as hell. Hillary was low key hating. Ivy was like, "Damn, not Jazz pulling up with a baddie on his arm." But Jazz got that clout. Now we can't just say the clout came from Hillary because everyone in the city knew who Jazz was because of his vinyl store. So they they were codependent on each other. Now when Hillary comes over, we know that she's jealous. She's supposed to be marrying Lamarcus. But she comes over and talks to Jazz like, hey, how are you doing? Jazz, he puts on his player hat. Jazz goes into full Momo right now. I don't know if y'all remember Momo, but Momo is a real thing. Now, Jazz got this pink 
cut off sweater. Is this something I will pull off? Probably not. I probably wouldn't even go down that avenue unless I knew I was going somewhere and I could wear the vest on top of like a like a long sleeve shirt or something. But pulling off a, a knitted vest with no undershirt is crazy. But Jazz can do that. Now, Jazz calls Hillary a coward. He's like, whenever stuff, she's a runner, she's a track star. She's going to run whenever it gets hard. So he's telling her, listen, you cut me off because, yeah, we had a disagreement in season two. Yeah, season one, we first started getting together and it wasn't idea. I mean, ideal. But now here we are and you're trying to push up on me. Nah, I came with something. I'm a real man. I'm going to do what I got to do. So Hillary, she's in shock because we haven't really ever seen Jazz sticking up for himself. And that's what I'm like, man, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Sydney Jones, when you become a real estate agent, let me know. Let me know what city you in so I can, you know what I'm saying? I got like a little, I got like a little 40, a little 40, 50 ball I could, you know what I'm saying, throw around. You know what I mean? I do need to look to expand some stuff because I am about to clear out some of my land in Virginia and I'm going to put two, um, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Virginia, I'm trying to put two, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to put two things on that land that I got there. I got like five acres out there. It was 4.93, but it's almost five. But I'm trying to put two uh cargo, two cargo houses on there. I think it's about 40 a piece, probably 45, 50 after everything, but But Carlton calls Hillary out. He's like, man, you've been on that bullshit. Because these hoes ain't loyal. No, they ain't. That's what Ivy said. All right. So once they get out of here, we do end up seeing him and Hillary kiss a little bit later on. That was in episode two. No, that was episode one that they kiss. Wait, when did they kiss? See, that's what I'm saying. They got too many episodes dropping. When did they kiss? Episode one? Oh, no, it was episode two. Let me see what I had to say about this because I don't, I couldn't remember if it was episode one or two. Hillary and Jazz end up running into each other again. And well, that chemistry's always been there. And Jazz has to let Hillary know straight up listen, that stunt you pulled with Lamarcus, that's messed up. You trying to give me a handout and have an Uncle Phil give me a loan? I don't want no handouts. I'm going to do what I need to do as a man. Plus, your whole family likes you, so that means that I'm a good guy. He's not really letting Hillary do too much talking because he has to get this off his chest. Now, Hillary, we know that she's still feeling jazz, and she's liking how he's talking to her. And they get closer and closer. And while he's telling her why he's such a good man, they end up kissing. Now, remember, jazz is a single man. Hillary, she's the one that's engaged. But she was enjoying this kiss, but she had to stop it because you didn't want nobody to see what was going on. Ah, very well put, Pasmo. So, the Pasmo, he know everything that's going on. I be forgetting, so I got to remind myself. And y'all told me episode two, so I knew exactly where to go to. But this right, because Uncle Phil had the, what was this? Was this like an opening ceremony for Philip Banks and company? Philip Banks and Associates? Because they brought Jazz along. Hillary was there. They went off into the back, and then they would end up talking. And then Hillary, she kissed Jazz. Hillary kissed Jazz. I have a connection to Norfolk VA. We're remotely in the university. Board of Directors, Alumni Association. Okay, Sydney. That's what I'm talking about. We got somebody with some connection. Norfolk. So my people from, uh, from Lynchburg. My pop is from Lynchburg. So that's where I got property out. Well, it's not in Lynchburg. It's in Amherst. You know Amherst County? That's where my people from. Run out. You you asked about the Moors out there in Amherst? That's my people. That's my fam out there. We we about 150 deep out there. But Hillary kissed Jazz. Jazz is single. So Jazz was close, but she kissed him. It's not on jazz to have self control. If the if the vibe is right, then you got to vibe all night. That's how I look at it with consent. 
if the vibe is right, you vibe all night. And Hillary, she felt that the vibe was right, and she was trying to vibe all night. She wasn't worried about LaMarcus. LaMarcus is playing for the Los Angeles Chams, not the Rams, the Los Angeles Shams, the Los Angeles Clams, not the Los Angeles Rams. So Hillary pushed up on Jazz because Jazz put her in her place the other night telling her that she's a fraud. She's a coward. So she's like, oh. And I'm not making this up because out of Hillary's mouth, Hillary says she kissed Jazz. Because initially she lied and said, Jazz kissed me. But then she's like, well, I kissed Jazz. So. Mm-hmm. Damn. I'm trying to think back when, I'm, when I when was in my 20s, man. My life was not like this. My life was not like a movie, man. I was out here fighting for scraps. I was out here getting shot at. Jazz is over here getting the baddies. <laughs> Kissing a chick who was just on a European vacation with a nigga for months of diabolical work. Hey. OT. Everybody on this show. Other than Ashley, because Ashley is the youngest, so we can't include her. Everybody on this show is just swapping spit with everybody. Everybody's just, I'm like, man, there ain't this many kisses going on in the real world. And pardon my French, but niggas ain't living like this in real life. Like, she just did a proposal with a guy. So you know she was, like, doing Lord knows what at the house, but you already know what I'm insinuating. Like, what? If Hillary want to come through to the bachelor pad, then come through. But all of this, no. Why? It's not called for. Is she feeling you? She feeling you. My girl Ice Spice said, you thought I was feeling you? Nigga, you a munch. Every three minutes and 39 seconds, we lose a brother to the street. And when I say this, I don't mean we're losing a brother by death or to jail, but. Here you go, sucker. I mean, brother. <laughs> Here you go, sucker. I mean, brother. <laughs> So Jazz gets a kiss. Whole time Jazz is broke. I thought I thought they said broke niggas don't get none. Why can't let me, let me. Lord? I've been on this earth for 39 years. Um I've had one encounter with um a semi-rich woman, but that didn't last long. Um uh, I'm just, I'm not praying for money or anything. I'm just saying, um, if you got time, could you bless a brother with the with the woman that, that got a little bankroll at the bankroll? Big money. I like it. I'm not asking for much. Maybe, maybe a father with like $10 million. I'm not asking for a hundred million. I don't really need that much. You know, I live a modest lifestyle. Maybe 10 million. She's looking to inherit like two, three, maybe. I'm not asking for too much. Just just a little to just to knock the edge off. You know, I'm out here, I'm working. They not hitting this like button. They definitely not subscribing to the channel. We've been trying to get 50,000 for like the last two, three months now. But I'm just saying, if you could, like, if you could just spare, you know what I'm saying? You just, if you just got one, like, she might not be the most, I mean, she she's attractive because we all made it your image. But I'm just saying, like, in the, in the flesh, she might not be that attractive. You just got somebody that's like 15 M's. 
that's willing to, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Mo, here you go. It's a hundred bands, you know. If you just got someone out there for me, if you could just look out for me, I'm not saying that I need the money, but I'm just saying. Well, I'm saying that I could use the money. I don't need them. I could use the money. So if you just got one out there, just, 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 just let me know. Just have her tap my shoulder, and I am like, I turn around. And I know this match made never. Come on, Lord. Come on. Come on. Do this for your boy. Do this for your boy. Oh, thank you. Amen. I'm not asking for much. Just 15 M's. What's the difference with kissing someone and y'all smashing random chicks like it's nothing? Uh, I'm going to show you what the difference is. Smashing a random chick is totally different than kissing a chick. Why? Starting the episode off, they're going over those 100 million ideas. This bottom corner right here, reusable condoms. That's the difference. You can use the rubber. Always use protection. But kissing a random chick, there is no protection from kissing. None. Whatever they got, whatever's in this motherfucker in here, it's on you. But you can knock down a random chick with a rubber and you'd be all right. It's risky, but it, you're safer than kissing a random chick. That's the difference. And if you got these new reusable condoms by Carlton and Will, Carlton Banks and Will Smith, then you might, you might be at a higher risk. <laughs> You might be at a higher risk. But what else happened to Jazz? Oh, we got the race. We got the Fast and Furious. That's really the highlight of Jazz's uh, time here. And we'll do that. And then we'll talk about on Viv and uh, Phil. And then we got Hillary. Oh, we already at 1130. All right, I got to pick this up. On. We got to get into overdrive. All right. So we got the drag race. We know that uh, Jazz is about to lose his car, willing them. They going out there talking about, yeah, we about to race for it. We about to race. <laughs> so they get out here. They putting the car up. They putting their life on the line. $35,000 goes to the winner. 30000 goes. Well, the car is worth thirty, So the car will go to, I forgot what his name was. But anyway, the car will go over to him. Long story short, Will and Carlton, they get out there and they tag team the whip. <laughs> Handbrake. Oh, hey, oh, Paul. But they do their thing. They fast and furious with it. This reminded me exactly of the first race on Fast and Furious with Ja Rule. <laughs> Even though we don't talk about that guy on this channel. But this is what this reminded me of. They out here, they got the road blocked off. Allegedly, they had the road blocked off, but there was two vehicles on the road. The only reason Will and Carlton are back here in this side alley is because there was a random truck on the road. I thought y'all said the roads were blocked off. As soon as I seen that truck, I would have just drove home. They would have been whooping on Jazz when he got when we got back though. Like, hey Jazz, you owe that car. Man, where the hell are Will and them at? I don't know. They ain't never show up. <laughs> they ain't never show up. But Jazz ends up getting his car and getting his money. Alonzo, that was the guy's name. Alonzo. And that was the end of Jazz's story right there. Until next week. We don't know what the hell Jazz got going on. Him and Hillary, they done hooked up. Hillary got issues, but, you know, we're going to talk about that next. Yeah, there we go. There go Jazz's story. Yeah, that, that was it for Jazz. All right. Who we got? We got Uncle Phil and uh, Viv, or we're going to talk about Hillary. I mean, we pretty much talked about Hillary's story, though. Other than what happened at the end with LaMarcus, which is really a joke. I mean, we can go over that. Because nothing's happened with Hillary. She's just divided between staying with LaMarcus or being with this dude that ain't got no money. (laughs) Uncle Phil, I'm Viv. Well, Uncle Phil ain't cheating, man. That was last season, man. If I did something a year ago, that ain't, man. You can't hold that against me.
Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. <laughs> Lamarcus gone like Trevor. Hey man, Lamarcus got fucked up out there, man. Lamarcus is trash. They talking about MVP. Man, that nigga ain't getting no MVP. That nigga is trash. We'll put uh Viv and Phil together and we'll just knock out both of their stories, Viv, Phil. I wonder before we jump into this. I wonder did how the actual story. I wish they would have showed us, or at least let us hear the conversation between Erica and uh, I want to hear what Erica had to say though, because Erica made it seem like she was the victim. Erica talking about, and we gonna, we gonna get into. It. I'm about to go grab these last drinks too, but Erica, I, man, and that's why I tell y'all, man, listen. Never, never keep anything around you that you may have knocked down, done anything with. You got to keep your distance. You don't do business with them, nothing. As a famous poet in Atlanta once said, and you guys might know it, it ain't nothing to cut the off. Say what you saying, though. You know I'm the man, though. You got to cut them off, man. MVP to RIP. Hey, I'm I'm telling you, hey, man, I, I think that nigga LaMarcus is dead. <laughs> that nigga LaMarcus is walking. It's medic. Yeah, he gone, man. He gone, man. Fellas. If a Jezebel comes in your life and she kisses you, don't push her away. Just go with the flow because if not, you're going to get arrested. All right. Give me a second. I'll be right back and we're going to finish this off. Um, yeah, yo, that's kind of crazy. We're going to end the story. <laughs> we're going to end the story. We got we got a field and viv and then we'll joke around about LaMarcus. Do y'all want the truth about LaMarcus or y'all want jokey jokes about Marcus? Because let's be real. There's no like I don't understand why these. I don't know. Let me not. Let me not speak about that. I shall return. Phil is an idiot. Hey, I'll be right. Hey, Brillo. Hey, Brillo. Give me. Give me two minutes. Pause. If you want to join, we could talk. Uh, I'm gonna bring you on for Phil if you want to. If you're good for that. Hey, just let me know. Just let me know. Just put yes in the comments. I'll be right back. I'm about to go grab these last trulies. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. We had what two forty five? All right, we we on we on schedule. We good. <laughs>